All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. I'm here with, uh, well, myself and the SSL Family Mom. Yeah. So today we're gonna be working on a, starting, I guess, a series on uh, building a privacy fence. And one of the things that we have found here is that uh, we're, we live by a pretty busy road and we'd like just a little bit more privacy in the backyard area. We've got mm -hmm. kind of a clear view, you know, into our yard and that kind of stuff. And so we wanna put up a little privacy fence. So this is all made from stuff that uh, is available at Home Depot's low, sells the same kind of stuff and Menards and other places, but this is particularly from Home Depot is where we got all this stuff from. Um, I've done a couple privacy fences before in the past at our old house. We did a, a really yeah. big one. Fence in the whole backyard. Yep, and it was uh, it was quite a big one. So that yeah. turned out really well. So we'll just take you through how, how I do it anyway and uh, what's worked for me. And uh, we'll go through from setting the post to laying things out to uh, putting the pickets up and uh, finishing it off. So we've got a string line laid out starting over there where the SSL family mom is clearing out some of our bushes so we can make room for the fence and uh, just have twine strung across here just to give us a general idea of where we're going to be running it and it's going to end right back in these bushes over here and luckily i just had the uh, dsl uh, people out to add a second internet line to our house and i'll talk about that in another video but they marked where those two lines are and so i just have to make sure i don't put a post here or here i'm probably going to end up putting one somewhere right in the middle so my first tip is not to buy the home depot pre-built sections uh, it really limits you, it ends up not looking as good when you're done, and you can actually put it all together with a little extra effort all by yourself and for cheaper. So we have all of the dog-eared pickets. There are something like 140, 150 of them, I can't remember. And then we also have two by fours here. These are eight foot uh, treated two by fours. Uh, these are gonna be used for the stringers between posts that the pickets will attach to. And we'll show you how all this goes together in a little bit. Um, I'm using two by fours instead of the two by threes that come on the pre-built sections. They're actually, they don't sell two by threes at Home Depot. And so you have to use two by fours, which is better anyway. And down at the bottom there, we've got our four by fours. Those are treated four by four by eight feet. So that is everything that we're going to need to build this fence with the exception of a little bit of concrete to throw in the post holes and a bunch of screws, which I'll talk about later on. Four. Looks like I might have been off by just a little bit with my where I thought the wire was. It uh, it showed up right here inside my hole. But guess what? It's it's not cut. It has a little slice on the bottom, but somehow it didn't cut it. So they were off just a little bit on their mark because that mark goes through way over here. But I guess it may may have I don't know. I hit it, but hey, we got lucky. Okay, so just a little bit about what we're doing so far. So we've got all of our holes drilled. So the depth of the holes is really going to depend on, uh, you know, how you want to do it. You can do this a little differently. I'm going 30 inches. I'm using an 8-foot 4x4. And what that gives me is sticking out above the ground. I'm going to have about 5 feet 6 inches uh, of post sticking up. To kind of give us a, an idea of what we're looking at here. So here's uh, my two posts. So there'll be a post here and a post here. 
and then I've got a 2x4 that's going to string in between them, and that 2x4 is going to just split the uh, right down the center of, the, of each uh, 4x4 post. So I'll have a 2x4 that's going to go straight across the top as a support. I'll have one that's going to go kind of in the middle, and then one that is almost at the ground level, a few inches above the ground level. And then our pickets are six feet tall. And so if we have five foot, six inches of post sticking out of the ground, that's gonna put our two by four about six inches short of the top of the picket if the picket is sitting right on the ground. And what that allows us to do, we don't wanna go down too much deeper than that with the post because then we have to move our, our two by four way down here. And then we've got a whole bunch of this picket sticking out and these things will warp, they'll, they'll curl. And so you want to make sure that you don't have too much of that, you know, without a support. So if we attach it right to the top here, we only have six inches sticking off the top. That'll stay nice and straight and that'll hold everything uh, nice and square. So this is the end that's going to go on the ground. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come up 30 inches. And I'm going to make a mark all the way around this post. And that, uh, as I fill in the, uh, uh, the post hole, I'm going to make sure that that mark is right at ground level. I want all this to float right along the ground and follow the contour of the earth wherever I'm laying it. And as we set these posts in, we're going to put um, some dirt on the bottom. We're going to put a little bit of concrete in there, about a half a bag of concrete per, uh, per hole. And then we'll fill the rest of the way up with dirt. That concrete just helps to kind of create a, um, a disc around that, that post in the hole. It kind of keeps it a little bit more stable than just the dirt alone. So now you can fill the whole thing with concrete if you want to. Fill it all the way up. That's totally fine. Uh, more concrete, the, the more stable it's going to be. But uh, with these things being in here two and a half feet and uh, you know buried with dirt and a little bit of concrete, they should be just, just fine. actually threw a few shovelfuls of the uh, native soil. We have real sandy soil around here. So I threw a few shovelfuls of sand in um, for each hole. So I'm using one 60 pound bag of concrete and I'm splitting that between two holes. And so we'll have 30 pounds of concrete in each hole. Uh, plus, I, like I said, I mixed in some native soil, uh, native sand here to uh, just add a little bit extra to it. Um, and you can actually you can actually do 50-50 with this quick crete. You can do a, a bag of sand per bag of concrete if you wanted to. Um, and it just doubles your, your yield. But you just might have to turn them. Not deep enough. We got the first two posts set and what we did was set the one on each end. So we set the one on this end here right next to the house and then we set the one all the way on the other end there. And then we ran our string line back through and this is going to be right on the face of this post. So it's right on the corner of this one straight across. And what we'll do is as we set each one of these posts, we're going to bring the post front edge as we set it in the hole the front edge is just going to touch that string line just come right up to it we want to make sure each one of these posts is set exactly at eight feet on center so that we can use our eight our eight foot uh, two by fours can go in between the, the posts so uh, we'll go back and measure through here and put a nice fine black mark right on this uh, string line and make sure that we get everything lined up just right all right now i need the level because i want to come level right to this mark So this hole, the black mark is right here, and our hole is a little bit off for some reason, so I probably uh, just screwed up wherever I placed it with the tractor. Um, so we are going to move the hole over a little bit. So I'll just take our post hole digger and we'll just widen this out. Sticks right there. Good. 
we've got all of our posts set and uh, all lined up here. Everything turned out pretty good. Had a couple things here. Uh, you can see that the, the little black line is just above the ground there, about an inch or two on the, the middle three. And that's because this is actually the edge of our septic tile field. And I started to hit tiles at the bottom of those holes. So I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to go any deeper. So we're going to kind of correct that by just shaving off a little bit of the top of these three. Uh, posts. We've got those marked. I'll run the saw around those. We'll get that uh, cut down just so that they'll be kind of equal with the rest of them. So before we get any of these 2x4s put in place, we're going to actually uh, countersink and pre-drill the holes at the end here. So we'll drill one here and one here, and that will help uh, so we don't get any splitting at the end of these when we put our screws in. I'm using two and a half inch screws to attach the 2x4s to the posts. And ideally we'd use a three inch screw, but I just happen to have a box of two and a half inch already laying around. We'll get those, uh, those countersunk and pre-drilled, and then we'll go ahead and get these stringers put up um, from each post. So I'm gonna put one right at the top of the post to connect the two together, and one uh, somewhere we'll split the difference uh, down the post here, and then we'll put another one about uh, maybe six to 10 inches off the ground. So we've got everything put together here. All the stringers are, are done and we're starting to put the pickets up and you'll notice that none of this is perfectly level. And the whole idea was that these pickets are gonna follow the curvature of the ground. Um, this is a pretty level area, so they'll be pretty much straight anyway. <laughs> but if you're running these for a real long distance, um, I, I think it looks a lot nicer if the pickets, each picket just sits right to the ground. Um, and then you just keep going right down the, right down the row there. And uh, it just looks a lot nicer than if you buy the pre-built sections that, you know, go in here and then the next one might be a little bit lower and then the next one might be a little bit higher and then the next one might be a little bit lower. Instead, this way, you can just have a continuous flow of pickets that will just go all the way down and uh, they'll just kind of follow the contour of the ground. So, and what we'll do is we'll just put in about four pickets and then we'll take our level and just check it, make sure that we're square, make sure that we're level on the edge here. And if we're not, we'll just make a little bit of an adjustment, maybe kick the bottom out, you know, an eighth of an inch or kick the top out an eighth of an inch until we get back level again and we'll run four more and then we'll just keep doing that. And it actually goes pretty quick. With two of us here, I'm just putting one screw in the top um, edge and then one in the middle and one at the bottom. And then my wife's coming behind me and she's doing the, um, the second screw in the top and the second screw in the bottom. In the center, we're just putting one screw. Um, I just don't think there's a need for, for two there. We've got like 140, 150 of these to put in, but uh, we might be able to get it done before it gets dark here. We'll see. finished product. A nice six foot tall privacy fence right to the ground all the way across and it blocks the whole view of the backyard now so uh, it's nice and private also reduces a lot of noise back there. And just a view from the back you see how the the back of it looks when it's all finished up. The 2x4s on here give it a lot of extra strength also so instead of the 2x3s so you can actually, you know, you could hang things from this. You can put uh, planters and all kinds of other stuff on here. You could also run a two by four um, this way between the posts. 
and you know hang things from underneath it put lights on it, whatever you want to do there's all kinds of different things you can do with these fences but um, these uh, six foot privacy fences like this are strong they're going to last a long time and man are they just nice to have they look nice we have been wanting something here since we moved in and now we finally have a privacy fence built so lots of different ways to do this uh, i'd love for you guys to share your tips and experiences if you've built uh, privacy fences like this before throw that uh, stuff in the comments for anybody to read of course if they're doing a project like this and if you're looking to build one of these fences hopefully this helped you out to kind of get things together and start thinking about how it's uh, how it can go together um, i will tell you a couple things that uh, come in really handy the uh, impact driver and the drill set that i have from dewalt and also that battery powered circular saw that's a new tool i just got um, those three tools are just a staple around here and I'll put links in the description to those uh, over on Amazon the other thing is that uh, nice long I think it's like a four foot metal level that thing is great for uh, leveling these fence posts off and that's another thing that I would recommend and of course that work light that LED work light is just awesome I mean that, that thing I, I, I just love that 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 is my favorite by far the best work light I've ever had I love that thing um, just lights up the whole area and uh, so easy to move around so anyway so links in the description to all the tools that I used and anything that you saw you know used in the video of course there, there as always there's links in the description to that stuff so you can check it out if you're interested or need those things to get this project completed don't forget thumbs up on the video as always and of course subscribe if this is your first time to the SSL Family Dad channel we'd love to have you tag along lots of projects like this one of course and many others we've got lots of gardening stuff and and animals and uh, tractors and equipment and uh, anything you think of that you could do yourself out here on the farm uh, we'll, we'll take you guys along for it so as always guys thanks for watching have a good one